Hey Badminton community, it is episode three of the Tokyo 2020 show, the show for badminton players by badminton players. In this show, we talk about the latest news, results, opinions, uh, predictions, and we also have polls amongst a lot of the things that we talk about. My name's Jeff, this is Henry here. We are from Volant and the Badminton Podcast. Now, for everyone who is wondering why the BWF is not live streaming or having highlights of the Olympics, it's because the all of the ownership rights for the media is owned by the IOC, the International Olympic Committee. So in order for you to watch any of the, the live action, you will need to tune into your local broadcaster. If you're not sure where to watch, check out the screen right now. There are a bunch of URLs that you can check out so that you can see where you can watch it in your country. There's also a live blog and a match center so you can stay up to date with live news. So Henry, we are in day two at the moment. Um, what are the key results so far you've seen? Look, it's been one and a half days of some really, really crazy competition. So many matches to choose from. Uh, but I guess the key results that we've seen so far are Misha Zilberman, the yeah. Cyprinith, beating him, upsetting him. Uh, we've had the Malaysian doubles pair, Aaron Chia and So Wu Yik, uh, versus So Sung Jae and Ch Choi So Gyu. So they, they beat them in straight sets. That was a key one, yeah? Yeah, yeah. yeah in, that, in that group, In group that D. particular yeah, yeah. group. Um, and then we had Liang Wang Chi Lin versus uh, Ranky Reddy and Shetty uh, losing out in three sets there. Uh, that was a tight one. 27-25. In the yeah. third. I think that we'll talk a little bit epic. more about that uh, later, but that yeah, that was that was pretty full on. Uh, and then finally, we have Chan Peng Soon Go Liu Ying losing to the Hong Kong pair uh, Tang Chun Man and Zi Ying Sweat um, in three sets as well. And because they also lost their match this morning against Mark Lamsfors and Isabel Hertricht, um, it means that they're most likely going to be heading home. Yeah, yeah. it's a bit unfortunate for the Malaysians, but. We've, we've, we've loved watching them over the many, many years so far. Yeah, and look, there's one thing we, we haven't really <laughs> talked about yet, and, and, and I think we mentioned this in our first and second episode, is there's the China factor. Mm -hmm. What's going on with China? What, what, did, what did you see in the first yeah. day and a half? Look, we weren't sure about how China would come out, right? We haven't seen them for so long, and they're coming out firing, I think. Like, mm, they, scarily. Yeah, some of their matches have been definitely more one-sided, mm. but there have been some competitive matches but they've been able to generally just win like pretty convincingly for, for all of the matches. So yeah. uh, of special note, maybe Chen Xin Chen, Jai Yifan against the Thai pair, uh, Kibi Tharakul and Prajong Jai, they were really dominant there. And just as a note as well, the, the Thai pair, they did lose this out, out this morning to the Korean pair, Kim and Kong. So it's unlikely they're gonna proceed through the next uh, stages into the knockout rounds. Mm, unfortunately for them. Yeah. Yeah, and then we've also had Wang Li Yu and Huang Dongping. Mm -hmm. um, they played the, the Hong Kong pair you talked about, Tang and Si, mm. and they won convincingly and straight. And so that played, was this yeah, morning. They played the German German pair yesterday, and that was uh, quite, it, quite 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 a competitive mm. match as well. Yeah. Um, but they were won quite convincingly this morning against that Hong Kong yeah. pair. So, yeah, that's right. Uh, China are definitely doing very well uh, off off the off the bat um, at the moment. And I guess one of those things, uh, speaking of China, is is Jia Yifan and uh, uh, Chen Chen they playing really well. Um, and I guess one of the things that we saw that Jia Yifan really misses, and in her own, in her own words, uh, it was village life is great. But only regret is no McDonald's, no my McDonald's. favorite food. <laughs> the 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 power source for Jai Fan. Um, unfortunately, Jai Fan, you don't you don't have McDonald's, uh, but we but do. We, we do. do. Got a Happy Meal. Oh, what's this? It's the Minions. Kevin and Marcus. What are they doing there? <laughs> so we got a toy as well as our McDonald's. <laughs> <laughs> so for all out there who love McDonald's. Um, so there's Jai Fun, so don't feel so bad about it because she is a world-class badminton player. Absolutely. Powerhouse, powerhouse. Um, but speaking of other, other news, uh, we did also watch the Japanese pair uh, in Fukushima and Hirota against the women's doubles, Lauren mm. Smith, Chloe Birch, uh, last night. What was going on with Hirota's leg? Yeah, she mm. had a huge brace on that right knee. And I thought, or maybe it's just psychological because there was a brace there, but I thought she was a bit tenderly moving backwards. Mm. Um, what did you think? I think when I saw her, I, I, I know we sort of disagreed on it, but when when she was playing, I felt like her the, the leg with all the, the external fixation thing yeah. um, that was on it, or the, the post-op knee brace potentially, uh, that, le that leg was just held up for a bit longer uh, than I would normally see uh, mm. for her. Maybe um, taking the weight off that leg. 
Yeah, maybe. perhaps, perhaps. Yeah. Uh, so it's all just hypothetical at the moment. We don't yeah. actually know, but yeah. we have heard that maybe there was a bit of a knee injury in June, but mm. we don't know what actually It's all shrouded in, it. in mystery, but we can <laughs> see that, you know, uh, she is normally the, the front court player, Hirota, but she was definitely trying to get there um, a lot more yesterday. Mm. So Sayaka, Hirota, we wish you all the best with your knee. Happy, sorry, healthy vibes for that knee of yours. We do hope that it, it holds out okay. And now speaking about just an Olympic journey and if you're gonna go, if you have qualified for the Olympics and you've trained so hard for it, right? Even if you were a bit injured or a bit sore, you'd definitely go because badminton for a lot of these athletes is is life, right? For yeah. years and years, what full time playing badminton, eat, sleep, badminton, repeat, literally. And I guess it's interesting to hear some of the stories that some badminton players actually have uh, hobbies and interests outside of badminton itself that, mm. that they do reveal and we can get we get to see who badminton players are inside and I think what we what we heard about Ivan Sozanov um, representing the Olympic Committee of Russia Russian Olympic Committee mm. is that in 2015 he took up the guitar yeah. and he's also developed an interest in arts as well as music mm. and Along with that, he bonds with his father over music and he might have found a bit of a secret for him in performance mm. with his father and guitar and music. So let's check it out now. My father come uh, for some tournament and bring uh, guitar with him and uh, uh, we just have meeting in our rooms and spend a good time in the evening before our matches. It uh, really helped us. It really helped us to win the uh, 2014 European Championship. Yeah, and it seems like Sosanov has certainly uh, used that to combat the the negative, the potential negative state of mind that sometimes he could be in. So, in terms of our next segment, we actually have a very special guest that's coming on to this episode, and uh, let, let's let's tune into that now, shall we? So today we have Porn Pui Cho Chu Wong, the world number ranked number ten player from Thailand. So she actually won her first world title in the 2020 Spain Masters, beating Carolina Marin in the finals. And most recently, she was runner up at the All England earlier this year. Well, it's a pleasure to talk to you. Pompoi joins us from Thailand. Uh, as we just mentioned, she is uh, world ranked number 10. Um, so Pompoi, what are your thoughts on the Olympics matches so far? Yeah, the result in the first match in Olympic, I think is still per my expectation, according to uh, the world ranking still. Yeah, and however, uh, all athletes play in knockout round and they will maybe have, I, they will try the best to get middle. Hmm. Yeah. So yeah. in, for, for the women's singles, who do you think will take the gold medal? Whoa. <laughs> uh, I think I have two players in my mind, like Tai Su Ying or Shen Yu Fei. Uh, if I have to, I think Tai Su Ying better. <laughs> okay, yeah. Uh, look, Tai Su Ying is definitely a favourite uh, to win the gold medal, as you said. Uh, and I think, yeah. you know, yourself, you have played many of, of the top seeded singles players at the Olympics, uh, Tai Su Ying yeah. being one of them. And you played her earlier this year uh, at the World Tour Finals uh, and you actually beat her. Uh, so it would be really great to hear what your thoughts are on what her strengths and weaknesses are and you know how did you beat her? Uh, uh, I, Thai is the one of the best player in women single uh, tennis, and she has uh, talent and uh, strength is very strong. So she become top three in best women single. I think is make her confident about her performance. And I think that day I can beat her, like I not allow her to pay what she like, the way she like, and put me, put, put, put her into my game. Yeah, mm. <laughs> enough. <laughs> 
So when you when you talk about the way that she likes to play, can you tell us the way that Tai Si Ying is liking to play most of the time? Like she like many many shot in the phone. I just also want to play in the the uh center or in the back better because in the phone she maybe have many shot to predict mm. <laughs> yeah yeah she is she is very unpredictable uh at yeah. the front court like you said she has so many options so many choices uh yes. so it sounds like when you played more to the middle and the back of the court you were able to uh i guess get get more of an advantage against Thai. Look, we, we really hope to see you in the 2024 uh, French oh. Olympics uh, in Paris. So uh, we do hope to see you there. Yeah, I also hope so. <laughs> and lastly, before we let you go, Pompoui, is there any message you want to send to the other Thai players that are in Tokyo now? You want to say good luck or you can say it in Thai, up to you. Yeah, uh, I want to send... Uh, the the heart to be the one who support the Thai or the player no except like badminton player but every every player who presenting Thailand yeah awesome so go Thailand uh, we hope they get plenty of medals uh, as well yeah thank you uh, well, thanks again Pompoui thanks Pompoui okay so it's excellent to talk to her wasn't it yeah, uh, she's got so much insight, and she's like she's beaten some of the world's best players. So it's interesting to see what she she thinks about what's happening in the women's singles event, mm. and hopefully, yeah, ho hopefully that's something that um, for her will be something that she can qualify for next Olympics because yeah. she's still very young. Yeah, hope to see yeah. her in uh, in twenty twenty four in France, right? Um, in Paris. Pali, Pali. Yes. <laughs> uh, but speaking of matches, speaking of speaking of play, we've got a pretty interesting lineup for tonight as well as tomorrow mm -hmm. morning. Um, the first thing is tonight we'll actually see some of our men's singles players that you know been dying to see, uh, dying to see. Anders Antonsen, Kento Momota, Lidza Jar, they're all coming out to play. Uh, we do expect them to you know. Re reasonably um, comfortably get mm. through their their rounds tonight um, but I think I'm very curious to see how Momoda is playing just from a confidence perspective seeing as that he didn't perform so well earlier this year at the All-Lead. Yeah, yeah. Um, I'm, I'm also curious to see Lizzie Jiao. Mm -hmm. I know that he's also very heavy favourite in the match tonight but just I just want to see how he's going to incorporate the, the pressure of the first Olympics and of course um, Malaysia's probably got some pretty um, pretty lofty goals and expectations on him. So hopefully he can play really well tonight and show Malaysia what he can do. Yeah, so Malaysia Bolle. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and then in terms of the do not miss matches, um, mm. moving on from there, we've got some really good matches tomorrow morning, don't yep. we? Yep. Yeah. So out of those, uh, we'd probably say the Misha Zilberman and Mark Kaljar. So Mark's from the Netherlands. Now, as we said before, Misha beat Cyproneath, probably the biggest upset so far of the mm. games um, in straight sets. He's never beaten him before, but yep. he's beaten him here for the first time. Crazy. And that makes Group D really interesting now because anyone can come out, come out of that group because Mark potentially could beat um, so, yeah, Misha definitely. and, and yeah. like, and then there's what's the dynamic between uh, Mark and Praneeth as well. Will Praneeth come back firing after that yeah. particular loss? So it's going to be very interesting to tune into that match. So mm -hmm. that one's at 11.20 uh, a.m. local time, Tokyo time, tomorrow morning. Um, the, the one that I'm sort of looking out for is the 12.40 p.m. local time, so around noon, uh, between Jeng Siwei, Huang Yachong, uh, So Sung Jae and Cha Yu Jong, uh, the, mixed, uh, the mixed doubles pair there. Uh, they do have a 5-0 uh, head-to-head, so China has won the, the all, all their meetings. Mm -hmm. But I think the what we want to see is Jiang Siwei actually get tested and Huang Yachong get tested, um, so we can really see where they are from a, from a you know standard. So seeing as we haven't seen them for such a long time mm -hmm. um, at the high level stage. Yeah, that's definitely a, a two watch. That's at 12.40 local time, PM. Mm -hmm. And at the same time, we've got Marcus and Kevin, Indonesian, mm -hmm. the our, minions. Our minions. The minions, the minions down there. 
And they're playing Ranky Reddy and Shetty, who of course came away with that win 27-25 in the third against Wang and Lee from Ta Taipei. Mm. And that's going to be a really good one for Kevin and Marcus as well, because of course we know Shetty and Ranky Reddy are, are very, very strong. Yeah. So we see how that they go. So I think that's one I'm definitely going to want to tune into. Yeah. And they were definitely really calm, especially in towards the later end, uh, a latter end of that, yeah. that match against Wang Chilin and Liang. We saw so many net cords coming <laughs> from Liang and Wang Chilin towards the end, yet they still managed to, well, they still lost to, to yeah. Ranky Reddy and Shetty. So um, very, very level-minded, level, level -minded, very um, very calm on court, and I think they're playing really well. Mm, yep, really looking forward to those ones. So let's move into our polls. So yesterday we asked the question, who is going to hit the fastest smash at the Olympic Games? <sighs> now there's there's been quite a few entries here, but drum roll. Praveen Jordan has won this, which isn't surprising. Absolutely, mm. he has a thunderous smash. And he's he's got about 30% of the votes just on himself. Mm. And then there's a huge range of other uh, votes there, but honorable mentions to Lizzie Ja, Malaysian men's singles player, as well as Kevin Sanjaya Sukumojo, um, Marcus Manal, the Gideon, the Indonesian minions, world number mm. one doubles pair. Definitely a strange one for, for Kevin to be picked uh, out, out, of, out of all the players, but mm. you know. Yeah, who knows? Yep. He might unleash some bombs there. Yeah, exactly. So in terms of the next question, guys, for guys and gals, uh, for for today is which event uh, will have the longest rally? So which which category? Men's singles, women's singles, men's doubles, mixed doubles, women's doubles. Which which category do you think longest will have rally. the longest rally, Jeff? I'm gonna have to go women's doubles. Agree. Agree. Yeah. yeah. The defense is so solid that. Yeah, uh, probably women's doubles. Yeah, I'd go with that. Yep, that makes mm -hmm. sense. Uh, what do you think? Make, Make sure, sure to comment. Okay. Put your votes in. <laughs> now, for the raise the racket for today, now we have had a fierce discussion, Henry and myself, about who we want to raise a racket to today. And we have decided to raise a racket to. Chan Peng Soon and Go Liu Ying from Malaysia. We raise our racket to you today. We have seen some really exceptional games from you in the past. You've been a very competitive pair. Uh, this perhaps could be your last Olympics, unfortunately. Uh, who knows? Hopefully, who knows? we see you again. Uh, but you know, it, it, from the results, it looks like they're not likely to make it uh, into. Yeah, it'd be hard yeah. for them to make it out of the group stage. But yeah. so we want to raise racket to them, respect, tribute to them, and all Malaysians. I'm sure you agree they've done awesome for the country of Malaysia. So absolutely, rack it up to them. All right, cool. So we are wrapping up episode three of the Tokyo Show. So thanks guys for tuning in to this episode. Uh, we did at, at the start give you a bit of a background as to why the BWF aren't uh, playing live streams of the Olympic coverage. Uh, unfortunately, the IOC has uh, the usage rights to that. Uh, but in terms of where to follow, where to watch, if you check out the screen right now, uh, you'll see that there are some URLs for you to, to follow the coverage on, whether that be the live blog or the actual games themselves. So make sure you check out your uh, broadcast coverage in where you're, where you're living. Okay, so for tonight's afternoon session or evening session, we're starting at 6 p.m. Tokyo time, local time. And then tomorrow morning, we're starting off in the morning at 10 a.m. So tune in for these matches, can't wait. Thanks for tuning in to episode three of the Tokyo 20 show, and we will see you tomorrow. See you everyone. Bye.